different populations confront a variety of suffering. For many, this suffering is the simple consequence of the hostile environment in which they find themselves. In our modern world, however, it is possible to ease these harsh conditions which create such difficulties for the majority of the world's population. What is missing is simply the will to act, and so one might argue that the main source of human suffering is egotism and the lack of solidarity between us. There is a part of Latin America that is extremely poor, a part of Argentina's northern regions, an area lost to the world. At the beginning of the 20th century, this land, purchased by multinational companies and depleted of its natural resources, locked the local inhabitants into unjust working conditions. Work opportunities became ever more limited, which further impacted on an already miserable situation. But then something happened that changed the region's history. In 1961, Añatuya, formerly a part of the old and vast diocese of Santiago del Estero, became a diocese in its own right. That is, a new jurisdiction of the Catholic Church. The first bishop of Añatuya was a man with a strong personality and a fervent desire to serve and work for others. Signs of his work are still evident today. He was a great missionary and, truly moved by a powerful missionary impulse, tried to accomplish several objectives. First of all, logically, evangelization, the gospel message and bringing the sacraments closer to people. I mean, this was a way of letting this vast area receive the appropriate message of God's word. For him, it was necessary for people to receive the sacraments, baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, penance, anointing of the sick, marriage. In short, he wanted to evangelize people and also to give them mass, sacraments and grace. Secondly, Monsignor Gautau appraised everything realistically, especially the place he had to live in, and realized that we could not merely rely on what we were doing, but rather we had to help in the area of social assistance and human improvement. The Diocese of Añatuya lacked appropriate roads, water, schools, productive resources and job opportunities. The Catholic Church did not have the minimum infrastructure to work properly. This visionary's first initiative was to summon help from other priests and nuns. They should be willing to endure life's adversities. To accomplish his goal, he asked for help in Argentina and other countries around the world. The first nuns to answer his call were the Vicentian sisters. Monsignor Gotau sent them to work at the regional hospital. We were walking on the road, bringing our statue, the Virgin of Grace. Dust was suffocating us. I said, brothers and sisters, take our Virgin's hand, we must go on. And I said, here you have me, and here I have you. How many times we used to say, oh my Lord, this is very hard, but I will not surrender. We did not have water, we had nothing. Well, this is how we started. We began working. We found many children suffering from tuberculosis, and Monsignor realized how abandoned they were and created this place. I came to help in the hospital, and in 1969 he founded this home to take care of the elderly and children. Sometimes there are people who come here to die, but to die in a hospice with dignity. This is the opportunity they have in their lives, the opportunity to come here and die in another way, to be assisted and many times recovered for a while. That is to say, they come here to have their dignity back. 
Many times there was nothing to cook. There was a cook, but he boiled water in the pots and a lot of vapour came out. But if we lifted the tops, there was no food inside. Then the sister in charge started searching, and we managed to have something to give them. Those days were really hard. Everyone is in need here, especially children, old people and adults as well. Every day, retired people come here to ask for medicine they cannot afford. Taking care of children, mainly when they are infants, was a great idea of Monsignor Jorge Gotau. He started watching children's difficulties and needs at school, and a general research was done in the district. This research showed that everything was due to undernourishment during infancy. We always had Monsignor's support. He was our guardian angel. He gave us sheets. He managed to obtain everything we needed. The needs here are great, especially of those who live in rural areas. Children and adolescents are often condemned to a future marked by the same poverty and ignorance that condemn their parents, unable to receive a proper education in such far away and isolated places. Early pregnancies in girls and child exploitation are part of this harsh reality. In light of this, the church organized homes where adolescents can live while they are at school, situated in the biggest cities nearby. These homes offer food, education, hygiene and work opportunities. The girls are encouraged to return a home filled with hopes of a better future. Resigned to their situation and unaided, a subsequent generation would be condemned to the hand-to-mouth existence so common in these areas. When I was 25 years old, I had the opportunity to come here to Anyatuya. I did not know what it was or where Anyatuya was. In the rural area, there is no other type of schools, only primary schools exist. Many of them provide a poor education. There is only one teacher for all the forms. In other schools, there may be two or three. In this way, children do not receive the teaching they need. When they come here, their first year is very difficult. Then they start overcoming their difficulties thanks to those who've been here for two or more years. I help a lot as well as teachers, especially when we know they are children from a rural area. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord, bless our food, bless those who have prepared it, give bread to those who are suffering from hunger, and confer hunger and thirst for justice to the ones who have bread. In the name of Jesus our Lord, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The interest in the development of children and young people has led to various initiatives. Primary and secondary schools have been established. Training centres for different jobs and schools for handicapped children have also been organised. Students come here having travelled long distances over several days. It is an uncomfortable journey but they are encouraged by missionaries who live in their hometowns. Lay and consecrated people join forces in their effort to build a different future for this region. For us, priests here, it is very important to receive the mass stipends from aid to the church in need. We know it is not enough, but it is a great material help.